Good morning and welcome to our service of morning worship and today we'll be doing the Northumbrian order of morning worship which is on page 12 of your service book. We'll take a moment to um, be quiet and come into the presence of God. A reading from Acts. They have devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So we spend some time in silence as we come before God to confess our sins and seek his forgiveness. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. The, day, the night has passed, and the day lies open before us. So let us pray with on heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 119, verses 89 to 96, and this is on the screen for you, and we say it together. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. Save me, for I am yours. I have sought out your precepts. The wicked are waiting to destroy me, but I will ponder your statutes. To all perfection I see a limit, but your commands are boundless. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now, first reading from Veronica. 
Thank you. The reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to the end. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue by saying the canticle together on page 14. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and on my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speak to me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. And Rachel will bring us our next reading. Thank you. The reading is from the Gospel of John. This is my command, love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the ones who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them the works no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. When the Advocate comes, whom will I send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father? He will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Your word is a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path. Thank you, Rachel. And now we get the sermon from Alison. Thank you, Alison. Today we remember Saints Simon and Jude, both Jesus' apostles, but men we know very little about. Michael Pettit has written about them in this week's notice sheet, so I hope you've read that. Jude isn't to be confused with Judas Iscariot, the betrayer of Jesus and Simon isn't Simon Peter. Jude has a Greek name and Simon has a Hebrew name, so perhaps they reflect the diversity of Jesus' first followers. Simon is twice referred to as a zealot, which may suggest that he had some extreme or aggressive views about the coming of the Messiah, 
or just that he was zealous for his faith, as St Paul was. There's very little reliable information about most of the apostles, but there are plenty of stories. They are said to have taken the gospel to many parts of the Mediterranean world and beyond. All but John were killed as a result of their Christian faith and witness. The word martyr originally meant witness. Some ancient Christian writers say that Simon and Jude went together as missionaries to Persia and were martyred there. So here are Simon and Jude in prison the night before their death. Not long left now, Simon. Will they crucify us, do you think? Or chop our heads off? Or saw us up into little pieces? Remember what happened to James? Herod cut his head off. And Peter, didn't they hang him upside down? Andrew too. They say Matthew died horribly in Ethiopia. I've not heard about the others. We don't often get any news here. There can't be many of us left now. But he did warn us. Do you remember that last supper? In a room upstairs, somewhere in Jerusalem. He said we would all be treated like he was, rejected, hated even, and we should all become his witnesses. When he said he was the Messiah, I was all ready to support him with force, just like that other Judas who betrayed him. At least I saw sense when I realised what he really meant when he said his kingdom was not of this world. We put our heart and soul into this work, didn't we? But was it really worth dying for? Witnesses, martyrs, dead ones. Yes, Jude, it was. We all knew exactly what we were doing because he told us. He did say we would be treated just like he was. At first, the crowds flocked to hear him and hung on his every word. They loved him. But then the authorities got scared and started to persecute him. They didn't like him because he's a threat to their authority and to their values, which reflected the commands of the law rather than God's will, earthly, not heavenly values. This in spite of all the things he said, all he taught them about the law being fulfilled and all the things he did, all the people he healed. He wasn't guilty of any of the things which they accused him of. Then they killed him. He knew he was going to die, didn't he? He told us we would be persecuted and perhaps killed too if we did what he asked and told people all over the world about him. Right from the beginning when he called us, he was a big part of our life and we of his, like family. We trusted him and he trusted us to bear witness to him as we had lived with him and known him for so long. And he did promise to help. Remember that day when the Holy Spirit came upon us? Didn't we feel strong and inspired then? He knew we'd need the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to endure all the rejection and opposition we would have to face. He said that the world would hate us, but told us to love one another. And he showed us what that really meant putting others first and ourselves last. He even forgave the people who killed him. So let's not worry about how we're going to die, but let's pray for the people who are going to kill us. They don't understand the extent of God's love, though we tried so hard to tell them. People often persecute other people when they don't understand their beliefs. We mustn't give up now or lose our faith. I remember Peter saying once, that when anyone suffers as a Christian, he shouldn't be put off, but should use his suffering to glorify God. Think of all those people who did listen to us and do believe. We knew what we were letting ourselves in for. We've done what he asked us to do. The 12 of us went all over the world, didn't we? Rome, Spain, Turkey, Armenia, Ethiopia, India. You and I came here to Persia a challenging place to spread the good news. We've always stayed together and looked out for one another like he asked us to. 
Do you think anyone will find out what has happened to us? Do you think we'll be remembered in the future like James and Peter? Just think, tomorrow we will get to see the old crowd again and join him in the kingdom of God at the heavenly banquet, just like he said. So let us pray. Lord, help us to follow the example of Simon and Jude and all your saints in serving you and spreading the gospel throughout the world. We pray that through our witness to your life and love, we may make more disciples, whatever it costs us, and come at last to your eternal kingdom. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Alison, and very powerful to put you in the mind of um, both those apostles. Um, it was um, it was interesting to think how how they must have felt. So we uh, continue. <clears throat> we continue with the Apostles' Creed. Jesus called us to trust in Him, so we profess in faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we say the collect for the day. Thank you. It should come up on your screen. Yeah. Thank you. And we say together, Almighty God, who built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. So join us together in the unity of the spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, Amanda, it will bring us the intercessions. Thank you, Amanda. Father, we give you thanks and praise for all who have had the courage to speak out boldly for the gospel, for all the saints and martyrs of the past, for holy men and women who now stand for justice and peace. May we join with them in serving you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for all who have shared their lives and their faith with us. We pray for those who teach the faith, for preachers and evangelists, theological colleges, religious education teachers, the Sunday school teachers. And we remember all who have been led astray by false teachers and vain promises. Lord of grace and glory, lead us from despair to hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are working for peace in our world, for those who stand up for the exploited or the underdog, for those with vision who seek to care for and conserve our planet. We pray for ecologists, for all who work on the land, for research workers and scientists. And we pray for those who have been cheated out of their land by economic powers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who share their lives with us and are dear to us. We pray for a spirit of good neighbourliness in our communities. May no one be neglected or forgotten. 
We pray for all who are estranged from their loved ones and friends. We pray for the building up of community life, for community centres, church halls, and places where locals can meet. And we also give thanks for the pets in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you all who are lonely, all who have been deserted by loved ones, and those who have recently lost a loved one. We pray for those who have difficulty in making relationships and for those in difficult relationships and where there is a breakdown in understanding or care. We pray for those who are separated from loved ones through sickness or who are in hospital or in care. And we particularly bring to mind those on our traffic light friends. Lord of grace and glory, be with them and where they need you. Be in the hands of those who heal them and look after them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who have sought to love you with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their mind. We remember all who have served you by serving others. We give thanks for all who in the past have enriched our lives and our neighbourhood with their goodness. We particularly remember Sylvia Webb and Cyril Garton. We pray that we may have a share with them in your kingdom in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Amanda. And we'll sing the blessing to one another. Thank you, Rachel. of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you may he guide you through the wilderness protect you through the storm may he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you may he bring you We pray for a time when we can all sing that together in church again. So uh, Norma will bring us the blessing. Thank you, Norma. God, who has prepared for you 
a city with eternal foundations, bring you with Simon and Jude and all the saints to the eternal and triumphant joy of that city. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love and keep you all safe this day and forevermore. Amen. So let us go in love and let us go in joy. Go in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. So thank you for everybody here and for the part you played. And thank you um, to the people later on that you've um, tuned in and watched this service. God bless you all.